issue with emergencies. And this issue is really for the administrative staff. You have to keep the patient of pain happy, but you also have to protect the patient of record that has waited three weeks for this four-hour Crown and Bridge appointment. You cannot schedule emergencies by pinching time from your regular scheduled patients. Does everybody understand? So you have a huge juggling act going on, and I want to acknowledge that. But if you don't handle your emergencies correctly, it becomes a huge marketing issue. I think that handling emergencies correctly is one of the biggest marketing tools you can have. And when you take a new patient out of pain and handle them well, you have another family coming to you to make the exam and the x-rays and become families for life. So I see an emergency patient as a marketing tool where you actually get paid to actually find new patients. So to me, handling emergencies is key to scheduling. Now, so the goal is that the doctor wants to obviously help patients in pain, and we need to help our patients of record. I'm a great believer in having a morning meeting. I had mentioned that earlier. There are 25 reasons to have a morning meeting. I will give you just the first two. The first two points of a morning meeting, point number one, is will today work? This is where the clinical staff are asked by the person in charge of the schedule, is there anything about today that you don't like? Please tell me now. And the second question that the clinical staff are asked is where do you want your emergencies for the day? Now, who did I not ask? I did not ask doctor. I don't need to ask doctor because I know what doctor will say. Doctor, where would you like your emergencies? Just bring them on in any time. But whatever time I bring them in, I'm told that was the wrong time to bring them in. So I'm going to ask the clinical staff when they want the emergencies brought in because it's the clinical staff that are going to make it work. Everybody agree? They're the ones that are going to have to move things around. Um, Another short-term negative is to let the emergencies take over on the day. Now, I know there are several people in the room, you're doing the wrong thing for the right reason. Bless your heart. You say to the patient, we're really heavily booked today, but come on down and we'll fit you in somewhere. That phrase will, is being retired as of today. You will no longer tell patients to rush on down at 90 miles an hour to sit there for two hours. I'm going to show you how to schedule them at a specific time. Um, I want you to think of your emergencies as a practice builder. Patients who are referred, an emergency new patient who is referred by another patient of record is given priority than the patient who called you from um, the Yellow Pages or from Google. A patient referred by another patient as a new patient emergency, that is gold. That patient at work said, oh, Susie, you have a toothache? Let me get my dentist on the phone. They're on a power trip. And they pick up the phone and they say, this is Mrs. So-and-so. I've been coming to doctor for some years. I've got a friend here at work who has been trying to get their toothache taken care of, and nobody will see them. And I said, you would take care of it. That is a patient at work showing off the power that they have with you, and you need to support it and get that patient in because that will become an ambassador. Um, so I'm going to give you rules for handling emergencies. Golden rule number one, a true emergency will come down any time. Do you agree with that? Thank you. A true emergency will come down any time. Golden rule number two, a true emergency does not negotiate for a convenient appointment. Can I remind you, you cannot have the word emergency and convenient in the same sentence. That's what an emergency means. It's inconvenient. It's like a patient calling the hospital at nine in the morning and saying, I'm having a heart attack. 
Would you send the ambulance at 10 o'clock tonight because that's more convenient for me? So a true emergency does not negotiate for a convenient appointment. And if they are negotiating for a convenient appointment, it's not an emergency. I learned that the hard way. Golden rule number three, I'm talking to the dentist in the room. Take the patient out of pain and reappoint. If I hear you're doing a full-rooted endo or you're going into dentures, I am going to kill you. Take the patient out of pain and reappoint. And for those of you here without the dentist, I expect you to have that on a big banner in the clinical area. Take the patient out of pain and reappoint. I don't have eligibility, I haven't talked money, I don't know that they haven't maxed out with their coverage and in the specialist office, I'm flying blind. We are taking the patient out of pain and we will bring them back. Golden rule number four, put your emergencies in the morning. Let me tell you what a genuine emergency is. They've been sitting in their car outside your front door since six o'clock this morning. That is a genuine emergency. They don't even bother with the phone call. They just drive over. I want them in the morning because in my scheduling programs, I'm a great believer in long mornings, short afternoons. You should have five hours from your first patient to lunch. So if you see your first patient at eight, you really should go to lunch at one. Long mornings, short afternoons. You do all the big stuff in the morning. We come back from lunch. Our energy is going down. You do the small stuff in the afternoon. Physicians tell us that 99.9% .9 of us are at our best between 9 and 11. That's where you do the big stuff. The last thing the dentist wants are 52 units of crown and bridge at the end of the day. The patient wants it, but doctor doesn't want it. So I want the emergencies in the morning, number one, if they're in pain, they should be seen. Um, and for the specialists, for the GPs in the room, if that patient has to go to the endodontist, they've got to go to the oral surgeon. If you've got the patient in the morning, now you have the courtesy to the specialist to be able to let them go in the afternoon. Calling a specialist at 4.30 in the afternoon, the specialists dread these calls, and yet you are a good referral practice, so they will take it, and they're the ones that go home at 10 o'clock at night, and that's not fair. The specialists would love to tell you, but they're scared to because they don't want to cut off your relationship. So emergency patients need to come in the morning. Golden rule number um, five. This is to your staff on the phones. Never promise treatment over the phone. Never say, and I learned the hard way, come on down and doctor will take care of it. Come on down and doctor will take care of it. Doctor goes into the room and says, I need to send you to the oral surgeon. Patient says, but Jenny said you would take care of it. I'm not getting and driving across town. I wonder how many dentists in this room have ever been talked into doing a procedure by an emergency patient they didn't want to do. And when the root tip broke on the extraction that they should have sent to the oral surgeon, they said, should have sent them to the oral surgeon. But the patient's sitting there with tears coming down saying, but doctor, I want you to do it. So I learned never to promise over the phone. I, I like the word ascertain. I don't care what word you use. I used to say, come on down and let us ascertain the situation. Let's see what needs to be done. Let the doctor diagnose your current situation and he will or she will tell you what the options are. You don't say, come on down and we will take care of you because we cannot diagnose over the phone. Golden rule number six, this is huge. Always talk to the patient in pain. Always talk to the patient in pain. If you talk to somebody other than the patient in pain, they will go into their Oscar winning performance. And let me explain something about women. When men call up and want something on the phone and they don't get it, bless their little hearts, they just give up. Women don't give up. If we don't get what we want, we just hang up the phone and call again and assume we'll get somebody else. We will just go into our Oscar winning performance. If you have a wife on the phone who wants her husband to be seen on an emergency dental visit, there is no way she's going to hang up until that appointment has been made. 
So I have learned that you have to talk to the patient. Now, the bright wife says, he's not here. There's a 90% chance he's sitting at the table looking at her. I can't tell her she's lying. So I'm going to trip her up in other ways. And the quickest way is to ask the wife. There are 10, this is the comment, there are 10 medical dental questions I need to ask your husband. There are 10 medical dental questions I need to ask your husband to ascertain the severity of the emergency so we take care of him the best way we know how. And so you're going to begin to ask her those 10 questions. Now the one she never has the answer to, which is to me it's the 10th one, I make it the first one. Does he have a temperature? She has no idea. Now as a non-clinician, and I mentioned this yesterday, I do not come from a clinical background. When I married my former husband and I went back on day one and I saw blood running around after about two seconds, I thought this is absolutely not for me. I backed out of the, uh, out of the treatment room and for the rest of my life have never gone into the clinical area. So I do practice management by common sense and logic. I don't do it clinically. And you schedule by common sense and logic incorporating clinical. So as a non-clinician, if I was limited to one question, it would be, do they have a temperature? Because if they have a temperature, it means they have a swelling, which means they have infection, which means I can get them in and out in a second. We're not going to do any dentistry. They're going to get a prescription. I love it when they have a temperature. She, of course, doesn't know, right? So I tell her to go and have the husband get his temperature and to bring it to me. In the end, she throws the phone over and he's on the phone because I need to ask, how long has it been hurting off and on? Now, if you just look in your workbook uh, at number seven, I've actually got the 10 questions there. How long has it been hurting off and on? How long has it been hurting constantly? Where is it in the mouth? Does it keep you awake at night? Does pain medication hold it? You all know those 10 questions. How many people in the room have no clinical background like me? You've arrived at the front desk of a dental office from a business background. Okay. Please do not sit here thinking I'm asking you to schedule emergencies. That was almost 40% of the room. Please don't think I'm asking you to have clinical background in order to ask these questions. When I came into dentistry, I didn't even know how many teeth a patient had. I knew how many teeth a dog had. I knew how many teeth a horse had. I had no idea how many teeth a patient had. As long as you know a little bit more than the patient, you will be fine. So you want to know how long has it been hurting off and on? How long has it been hurting constantly? Now, why do I want to know that? This tells me a lot by the patient. Uh, Mrs. Patient, how long has it been hurting off and on? Four years. <laughs> how long has it been hurting constantly? Oh, about 18 months. This is a patient looking for a convenient appointment. Everybody with me? This is a roofer and it's raining. And the roofer was sent home, and he suddenly decided this would be a good day to get that tooth taken care of. So according to him, he is dying. Now, when the wife was on the phone, trust me, she had him dying. And so I responded to the wife, and the first time I brought this patient in, in fact, when I didn't ask these questions, I was dealing with a roofer who'd had a toothache for a year and a half, the rain stoppage caused the roofer to go home, but boy, the wife was so convincing, I almost sent the ambulance for him. So I've learned if you're going to control your emergencies and keep the doctor on time and stress-free, we have to diagnose to the ability of our business background what kind of emergency we have. Now, these are the verbal skills that will deliver this patient at the time that the assistant said they want the emergency patient. Doctor is so committed to being of service to patients who are in, and you'll notice there's a little blank. What's the one word I'm going to put in there? Pain. It's the only time in my vocabulary I use the word pain because the patient told me they were in pain. Doctor is so committed, Dr. Brown is so committed to being of service to patients who are in pain. That's what the patient told me. 
that we reserve special time each morning just for patients needing immediate, immediate attention. Now you notice I didn't say care, I'm not promising, I said attention. Attention is looking in the mouth and saying we need to send you to the endodontist. So I've used pain and I've used immediate. On a good day, a genuine emergency says what? Thank you, I'll be there. My husband took the car, but I'll call the next door neighbor. I will be there. What time again did you say? 9.30. To your amazement, having heard that this patient hasn't eaten for a week, has a temperature of 472 degrees, you offer them an appointment at 9 o'clock in the morning, and they say, I can't be there. What part of this am I missing? I have so much fun with these verbal skills. Mrs. Patient, I am so sorry. I must have completely misunderstood you. I thought I heard you say you had a dental emergency. I didn't realize you were looking for a convenient appointment. Let me explain something. You cannot be to all things, to all people at all times. Does everybody agree? If the patient says they have an emergency and they're looking for the service and I offer them the service and they turn me down, that is not an emergency patient. If anybody's had surgery in an outpatient facility, one of those walk-ins where they get you there and you do some minor surgery and they take you out, they don't negotiate with you. They inform you, you will be there at 6 a.m. Now, you and I know that the physicians turn up at 9. And of the three hours between 6 and 9, you see somebody for about one and a half seconds. And for the rest of the three hours, you're just left to do your own thing. Now, do we get there at 6? No. We get there at 5.30 because we don't want to be late. And the parking lot is full of people being dropped off by other people because we all want to be on time. We don't negotiate and say, I want to have that surgery at 4 o'clock in the afternoon when it's convenient. We say, thank you for making this happen. We will be there at 6 a.m. They don't negotiate with hospitals. Why do they think they're going to negotiate with the dental um, service? Because that's exactly what you're doing. And some of you are doing extensive dentistry. So to me, you don't do it. So the bottom of this page where I've got the summary is I think if you can learn to handle your emergencies well, it is a huge practice builder. When we started our practice on day one, Edmund had just graduated from dental school, we, but between the two of us, we knew absolutely nothing. I made every mistake in the book you could possibly make. I think the first patient I sat for the exam, we discovered afterwards it was the telephone repairman who came to install the phones, what, whatever. <laughs> Whatever mistake I could do, I did it. And after 90 days of mistakes, I lost more money in the first 90 days. I think I wrote off $3,000 in the first 90 days. It took me 90 days to sort out how to do it. And after 90 days, I got my act together and I worked out logically how to do it. And at the end of the first year, our practice had gone from zero to we actually closed it down for a month over Christmas and we just disappeared. And I am totally convinced that that practice grew from the way that I handled the emergencies. Because every new patient emergency not only is going to reappoint for themselves for an exam, they're going to bring the family, they're going to bring their neighbors, they're going to bring their circle of friends. And it didn't cost you a penny. Now, I do have a dentist that came to my seminars one day, um, and I thought it was brilliant. And we did it to, um, to a different degree. He would take an emergency patient. This is not clinical, this is not, excuse me, this is not time management now, this is marketing. This particular dentist would take an emergency patient and at the end of the visit, maybe it was a simple extraction. He would say to the patient before they left the chair to go back to the business area, uh, Mr. Patient, I need to tell you what my fee is for today. And the dentist would hand the patient six business cards and he said, Mr. Emergency, my fee for the day is six patients referred by you 
from your friends, neighbors, relatives, and co-workers. And I looked at the guy and I said, that's brilliant. How long have you been doing it? He said, a couple of years. And of course, my next question is, do you keep the log and the stats? He said, absolutely. I said, what does your average patient send you? If you give them six cards, do they send you six? Do they send you three? He says, the average emergency patient where I wiped the fee clean and said, pay me with the six cards. He said, the average emergency patient sends me 12 patients. Now, if you look in your practice and your average new patient was $1,000, just to throw a figure out, that means that emergency extraction, actually, you just got $12,000. Does everybody understand? What we used to, I'll be right with you one second. What we used to do in our practice, if it was something minor, maybe it was just popcorn um, that got under the gum, something very simple. When they came to the counter, we would waive the fee. Now, I'm not talking about doing end on an emergency visit. I mean, just something simple. We waive the fee. Dentists don't waive fees like that. That patient would sit right there and book half the street in.